ago in a galaxy far, far away in the 1970s and 1980s, actually. There was no way to present your ideas electronically. You had to do it mechanically. And people did it with the Fairchild 7007 movie projector in a briefcase. And that today is what we're going to talk about. The Fairchild. See it right here? Fairchild. 7007. I hope I sound good. Today I am using the 7RYMS microphone. It's called a Remo mic or Remo mic light. I'm going to unplug it so that you can hear the difference in my sound quality. It is now unplugged. This is the receiver for the microphone and I'm wearing the transmitter currently. And there we are. Our microphone is now plugged in and I am speaking through it wirelessly. Yes, so cool. So what is the Fairchild 7007? It is a movie projector, self-contained. It does not project on a wall. It actually projects onto a built-in screen. So you would be heading out to your client. You're gonna sell them something. Perhaps you had someone uh, on your sales team and you wanted to teach them something that would last a lifetime. You would take this briefcase with you, plug it into an outlet, open up the lid, and there inside is the magic. Lift up this screen, some little flaps come out the back, and hold it in place. Then you would lower the lid, insert your cartridge into this slot right here, and off you would go, presenting your material. This is a Fairchild movie pack, 7020. It holds 20 minutes worth of material, and you can see it has Super 8 sound film. The sound is recorded magnetically on a magnetic stripe along the side of the film as you see there. So this is pre-videotape days. Not to say we didn't have videotape back in this day, but it was actually cheaper to go this route than it would be to send someone a VCR and a television and a videotape. So this was a cheaper unit, but it was not cheap. It was still an expensive unit. You would then plug in your cartridge here into the slot, push it until you hear it click. Across the front here, you have a volume control a frame control, focus, and your off and on button are here. Now when you start the player, you need to hold down this lever until you hear a kind of a little clicky sound. I'm not sure exactly how to describe it, but basically once you press that lever, there's kind of a kick in of the unit that it's in play and ready to go. So this is what would happen. Pack up the rabbit so that he could experience the roominess for himself. And I showed the Parkers that these seats are chair height, which is an important comfort feature they're not likely to find in other cars. Of course, these rabbit advantages don't stop the other salesmen from trying. And trying with price is really all they can do. So this plays at 24 frames per second, and of course I'm recording at 30 frames per second, so we have some flicker there. But uh, that's the general operation of the unit. I would be amiss if I didn't explain to you how I obtained this unit. The person who I bought this from is actually a YouTube follower of mine. And he contacted me and says, hey, I've got this unit. I want to sell it, but I'd rather sell it to you. Make me an offer. So I made him an offer. It did not work out of the box. In fact, it was in pretty bad shape mechanically. Well, not mechanically, but uh, operationally, we'll say. Other than belts and rollers, this machine is really solid and heavy as well. I'm going to take the camera free-handed so we can kind of look around on this thing up close. So pardon the dust. I didn't exactly clean this thing spick and span, but uh, there's our volume and frame buttons up close, our focus and on-off switch up close, and then our speaker is beyond this grill right here, which almost looks like the grill of an old car or something. 
And if we look inside this tape well here, you'll see all the goodies that are making this cassette playback possible. There's a roller here on the left. I'll move and so it's right in the middle of the screen. That particular roller I replaced with an 8-track tape roller because the original one was goo. And then now in the center of your screen, you'll see the capstan there that meets the pinch roller, which was fine. And that little guy pops up as you insert the cassette and then also brings up the playback head for playing back your particular content. So let's look around on the other side of the unit. The right side of the unit is fairly boring. It has only a headphone jack here on the side for a little bit of private listening as you watch your film. And you can see the cooling fan peeking around the corner right there. And I guess the other side is equally boring. This is the left side. Notice there's tape going across here. That is actually, there was tape there originally as well. I'm not sure why, if it was blocking light or something that may leak through this part. But uh, there's also a little notch right here where the top of the lid fits in. So I had to leave that space open. Now, again, lifting up the lid, you'll see on the back we have a mirror and the mirror projects the image, which is being projected right through there. Hi, you can see my arm. Okay, so this lens right here is what's actually projecting the film. It hits this mirror, which then hits this mirror, which hits this mirror, which is then transmitted to the back side of your screen, which you see here. See, so I could like put my hand on the outside. Oh, it's aliens! They're attacking! Ah! Underneath here is like a pad, like a soft velvety pad that kind of covers up all the light that's happening down in here. The bulb for the unit is replaceable from the bottom side. Looking at the bottom of the unit, we have a little hatch door on the bottom here and a little lock piece here that we turn to the left to unlock it and open it up. And you'll see the projector bulb is here. So to replace it, you're going to pull this plug off of here. Well, actually it pulled the whole thing out. I didn't expect that. USA 17. There's our groovy bulb. You want to avoid touching the bulb because the oils on your fingers will catch on fire and destroy the universe. But uh, at minimum, probably ruin the bulb. Um, as it says here on the side, use a EKG bulb. So the same one they use in hospitals, EKG, right? Yeah. So anyway, yeah, there's our bulb and the replacement. And then you can see right behind it there, there's a spring that's holding that in place because it does get so hot. It needs something that can also get hot in order to hold the bulb in place. So just as a size comparison, so you can see how big these particular cartridges are, a VHS tape would fit in the very bottom of this unit, literally. Open up the cartridge and stick a VHS tape inside. So yep, these are very big cartridges. And speaking of cartridges, stay tuned, and at the end of the video, I will show you some scenes from two more of these cartridges. So again, we saw a little bit of why buy a rabbit, and I have two more that I would like to demonstrate for you as well. So here is one of the belts that was in there. Isn't that lovely? And here's the other belt I replaced. There was a third belt in there, it was a white one. And there were fragments of it all inside this unit. It had to be vacuumed out. So, and then that goo stuff like has a tendency to get on your fingers. And the goo happens to be removable by regular old rubbing alcohol, which is really quite nice. Now you say, where do I get belts? What I do is I just buy belt kits off of eBay, just like a big pack of random belts. And I keep them in a box. And when I need a belt, I take it out of the box. So. Just a recommendation there. Well, let's tear into this guy. I'll show you how quick and easy it is to get inside the unit. So there's four flathead screws that we're gonna to need to remove. There's one here. 
short screw, lift this whole unit up. I'll point out some of the uh, major components of the unit here. So this mirror right here that flips down inside the cartridge is actually beaming the light from the bulb that's underneath here up through the film and through the lens and then of course through the mirrors which we've already discussed. I believe this little coil here has something to do with audio, but I'm not sure what, maybe it helps remove hum or something. I'm not sure what that does precisely. You can see the, uh, the back side of the headphone jack right there. You can see our drive motor here with this very sturdy metal fins with the metal fins on it. There is a little lever that comes up when you insert the cartridge. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you should be able to. Watch right here. Now notice when I push this lever in, it moves up. It is attached to a plastic square piece right there. And you could use an Allen wrench to tighten it into place. And unfortunately, when I tried to tighten it, that black part that you see down there actually busted in half. I welded it back together with a soldering iron. There's two pieces to it. I just used a soldering iron and just kind of melted it back together. Got it back on that rod that it sits on down there. But it's extremely important that this thing be here because when it comes up and you insert the cartridge, it goes up and hits that white button right there. And that's what actually starts up the unit. I will demonstrate by pressing it. So without that little lever right there, this whole unit is not going to start up. And then our advance right here, that is what is advancing our film at 24 frames per second. That little lever right there is moving extremely fast and it just grows in, moves the film, comes up, moves the film, comes up, repeats the same process. When you hit the focus button here on the front, it is attached via this cable. And when I turn it, it moves our lens in and out. Our frame advance works off of this rod right here. And if I turn that, you can see this little piece here moves, although not dramatically moves a little more dramatically when the film is actually in motion there. And then of course our potentiometer is right here for our volume control. And I did spray a little WD-40 in there. I don't have any contact cleaner at the moment, so a little WD-40 does the trick in its place. This roller right here that we talked about earlier, this, is, uh, this was complete goo. And you are seeing an 8-track tape roller that's on the top of there that uh, has a very important purpose in its life. So for example, grabbing a cartridge here, inside this cassette, the film is pulled out of the center of this, of this spool here. Without that roller turning the cartridge, uh, what would you call it, turntable here? You guys, you could call it a turntable. It's a reel, and the reel is actually queuing up the, the film to come out of there instead of pulling it out of the center. So when you insert the cartridge here, that roller rides along that part right there, and that is the edge of the spool that holds our film. To remove the rest of this chassis, we need to remove four screws. There is one here, there's a matching one right here, and then there's these two, I don't know what you'd call these, little uh, rods, I suppose, that screw on, and take both of those off. And then once we do all that, we're gonna flip this whole thing over, and then we'll see where the belts go. And here's the two removable posts and the two screws. And I misspoke, you actually remove screws from here on the plastic side, not on the metal side. And now we're looking at the real magic of this machine. All the cool components that make this thing work and make audio and video possible. 
So just to point out, this is the giant speaker. Look at the weird shape of that thing. That is so bizarre. There's our audio speaker. Here's the audio amplifier. Some nice big caps on there. I didn't have to replace any of the caps. We have this uh, solenoid right here that is uh, doing part of holding or locking into place uh, that lever that comes up that's got the, the pinch roller on it. And there you see that locking pinch roller right there with audio head. I did clean that, but boy, it got dirty really quick. This is the reel that runs the capstan here, which goes directly off the motor. The motor is also driving our little shutter right here. So in between frames of film, it blocks the light so you don't see what is happening as the film is being advanced. Okay, otherwise you would have a blur between every frame of film. And then this particular part here, which runs off of that, is the bottom side of our little 8-track tape roller that does our advancing of the reel to make the tape move nicely. Again, there's our motor, which also has a power transformer attached to it, and that, of course, is powering our audio amplifier here. Very, very cool. And how would you like to see all this mechanism running, seeing what all these things do on the underside? Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and push the little button that makes everything happen on its own. Right? Here we go. That's another thing neither of the competition could do. That two-for-one feature is important for those times when you're carrying a bigger load. Try this on a Datsun or Toyota. How about putting you into a wagon? Oh, I, gee, I don't know. That would probably be more than we want to spend. You're probably talking about way over $4,000, aren't you? You see, the flexible load carrying capability of the Rabbit is a key feature. Not only does the Rabbit have more cubic feet of basic trunk space, but it's easier to get at. In those other cars, the luggage space disappears under the body. On the Rabbit, you can lift luggage in and out more easily. As the Toyota salesman said, you can always buy a wagon. But that means you're adding several hundred dollars to the price, and you lose the concealed trunk space you get with the Rabbit hatchback. Thorough checks ensure that each individual door is up to the great strain that may be imposed on it in an emergency. The door is put through a special test. This one too stands up to it and will guarantee lateral safety. My private accident test went like this. We were in Italy my family and our BMW. Shortly after San Giovanni near Bologna, I wanted to turn into a side road on the left towards our camping site. My direction indicator was working and the sight of a small Italian car coming up behind didn't worry me. Just as I wanted to turn off, he tried to pass. He had not seen my indicator. Then it happened. He must have been doing about 30 miles an hour when he drove into my left door. But it stood up to him. Another test in which a frontal collision is simulated. The windscreen and rear windows fall outwards, so no splinters can injure the passengers. Why you sorry she blow down underhanded? Ranting and raving might give you a world of pleasure, but it won't help solve the problem. Action within the proper channels will. Be informed about your rights as a consumer under local, state, and federal laws and regulations. Know which organizations and agencies are available to help you maintain those rights. And take an active part in preserving your rights as an individual consumer by joining voluntary consumer organizations and voting for political candidates and laws that protect your interests. There's another kind of protection you need to know about protection for your own physical well-being.
This will conclude our demonstration of the Fairchild 7007 cartridge movie player. Please subscribe to this channel. If you're interested in checking out the microphone that I used to create this video, unlike the one on my last video that nobody liked, even myself, uh, feel free to look for the link down in the description. Also, follow me on Twitter and on Facebook if you'd like to communicate with me there. And a big thank you to all of my very faithful Patreon patrons who have stuck with me for a very long time. You guys are great. If you'd like to join their crew, please look for the link in the description as well. Thanks again for watching and being a supporter of the DataBits channel. Have a good day.